So if you're running Google Ads right now for your brand and you're thinking to yourself, I've not got a huge budget here, can I still do well? The answer is yes. And so in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can kill Google Ads, how you can do extremely well with Google Ads with tons of profit and you know a lot of sales with a small budget. So most small budget campaigns fail, not because they've got a small budget, but because they're using the wrong settings, the wrong structure and the wrong targeting. So if you don't know me already, my name's William. Over the last five years, my Google Ads agency, Touchpoint PPC, has done over 80 million on behalf of our clients in sales, selling over 700,000 products online. And so what I wanted to do is essentially share everything that I've learned so you with much smaller budgets can get better performance out of your ads. More sales, more profit, even with a small budget. So this video is dedicated to the setup and structure that I would use for small budgets to essentially get better performance out of your ads and start growing your Google Ads revenue and growing your business. So when I say small budgets, what do I mean? Well, a small budget to us is anywhere from sort of like a thousand to three thousand dollars slash pounds. That would be considered a small budget. We only take brands on that are doing over 4k a month in advertising spend. So almost anything less than that is considered very small for us. If you're spending less than a thousand pounds or looking to spend less than a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars, Google Ads can can work, but it's going to take some time, right? So you really want to be looking to generate at least 10 clicks a day from your Google Ads campaigns. And that's the sort of like barometer as to where you'll find consistency with Google Ads. You may be able to generate purchases through Google Ads with less than a thousand pound a month budget but it's gonna be slow right like the time to progress will be longer so the more advertising spend you get the more impressions the more clicks the more conversions that you can get over quick succession which allows the automated bidding strategies that we use max clicks max conversions target ROAS whatever it might be to essentially learn right like it needs data to learn and it needs consistent data to learn so small budgets are fine you can still test Google Ads with a small budget and maybe you can still succeed with Google Ads with a small budget but when we're talking small budgets here we're talking between one and three thousand dollars slash pounds every single month so assuming that you do have between one and three k to spend on ads you would be considered a small advertiser and we can move on to setting up the foundations first thing that you're gonna need to set up is your merchant center so your merchant center essentially will connect the products on your store to google ads right like it's the link between the two so what will happen is you'll set up your merchant center and that will pull all of your products into Merchant Center and then push them through to Google Ads so you can start advertising them on Google Shopping. Now, once we've done that, we need to set up our feed. So that's where all our products come into Google, right? And there's a couple of things that I would focus on if you're looking to improve your feed. I have got a completely brand new video on this, which is a little bit more extensive, but not really for new advertisers. So if there's a few things that I would personally focus on as a new advertiser, it would be high quality images. Make sure all of your products have got high quality images. Make sure that you've got searchable product titles, really important, and make sure that you're pulling through your review platform. So if you're using reviews.io or Trustpilot, pull through that, connect it to Merchant Center and pull through that data so you can start showing those stars on your shopping ads, which will build trust and improve your click-through rate. Even a handful of reviews can make such a big difference in terms of click-through rate. And then finally, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that you've got tracking set up. Tracking is incredibly important. Tracking basically shows you what ads are generating sales keywords are generating sales and where your performance is coming from right gives you that visibility if you don't have tracking installed you won't be able to see where your conversions are coming from and you'll be optimizing your account completely blind i have a separate video on this if you're using shopify it's super simple use the google and youtube app it'll take you less than 10 minutes to set up and your conversion tracking will be solid if you're running purchases which you should be for e-commerce business make sure that you've got add to cart initiate checkout and all of those secondary goals set as secondary goals in your events and the only goal set as primary is purchase you're looking for purchases right so set the primary goal as purchase okay so now we can move on to campaign structure so this is where most advertisers mess up and if you've watched any of my previous videos you might have seen me talk about multi-campaign structures you know big accounts with lots of spend how to structure them but you haven't got lots of spend you're a small advertiser you've got less than 3k a month in advertising spend right and so we need to treat your campaigns we need to treat your 
account completely differently. Normally, I would be pushing standard shopping for our first campaign, but more recently, we have found when we're testing standard shopping versus performance max, I'm not sure if it just does, but we found we get far better performance out of performance max. And I think that's because that's where everything's heading, right? Like Google wants more automation built out in its campaigns and it wants the algorithm to do more of the learning and you to do less of the handholding. And so I think this push towards performance max is just a way of Google saying, look, we believe we can get better performance without you touching it. So use performance max and stop altering things in standard shopping campaigns. So yeah, our structure has changed a little bit. So for campaign number one, I want you to start simple. I want you to do one performance max campaign for all of your inventory, right? So why would I say that? Why would I just say one performance max campaign when in most of my other videos, I'm talking about multi-campaign structures? Well, you don't have the luxury being a small advertiser of having the budget to spend across multiple campaigns. You need to consolidate your learnings. The way Google's algorithm learns is with data. And so you need to feed it enough money which translates into enough impressions, clicks and conversions to start learning, right? You need to get out of that learning phase. And so the more budget that you give this consolidated campaign, the quicker the learnings will be. So if your store has distinct categories, let's say t-shirts and jeans and backpacks and trainers, right? Then you might want to split them in the campaign into different asset groups. So you'll have one campaign, four asset groups in this specific example, and you'll split your shoes away from your t-shirts and your t-shirts away from your jeans, and you'll have them in different buckets, but in the same campaign. So the reason we would do this is it allows you to um, essentially narrow down your headlines and your descriptions and your images and your videos so that in each of these different buckets, you know, if you've got jeans in one bucket, all you've got is headlines talking about jeans. All you've got his descriptions talking about jeans and videos and images all about jeans right it really helps to improve your ad relevance essentially so you might get better click-through rates from your ads so one campaign for different asset groups for your different product categories and then we have a consolidated campaign that still has some structure to it so to begin with put 100 percent of your budget here let's assume you have a thousand pounds a month in budget i think that's roughly 33 pounds a day will go into this campaign into this consolidated campaign with asset groups broken out for your different categories and then leave it you need to leave it to run for at least a couple of weeks right monitor it obviously if it's not picking up spend then there's things that you'd need to do but if it's running, it's spending, it's getting clicks, it's getting conversions, leave it. You need the algorithm to learn over a two to four week period, start generating enough data to be able to start using automated bidding strategies and move on to stage two. So a few tips here, make sure you're using people in or regularly in your target location. That's a campaign setting. Don't use people in regularly in or interested in your target location. You're gonna get a bunch of clicks from all over the world from people that you can't actually ship to. And make sure you're your target locations i know it's a silly one but make sure your target locations are actually destinations that you can ship to in terms of the bidding strategy we like to use maximize clicks to begin with you don't have enough data to run a conversion focused automated bidding strategy if you've got no data yet right so make sure you're using maximize clicks or potentially manual cpc so you should start to see impressions and clicks within the first 24 hours but if it's not spending your entire budget don't worry, just let the algorithm pick up. It's never gonna spend your entire budget over the first couple of days. And within the first week, you might start to see some sales, but don't tweak it, let it learn gather the data. The only thing I might do is just go into my search terms and just double check. Pmax offers search terms now. If you're a new advertiser, you might not know that, but you can go into your search terms. So if you go to campaign insights search terms, you can look at essentially what people are searching to see your ad. So if there's anything that looks particularly out of line for you, it's got no commercial intent, it's just definitely not going to lead to a purchase. Click it, highlight it, tick the box, and then negative off that search term, which means that your ads won't appear for that specific search ever again. For instance, an example could be if you're a shoe seller, you know, someone looking for free cleaning kits for shoes isn't someone that's going to be purchasing shoes from you. So you could ax that off, you could click that ticket and negative that search term term off. So just doing this every now and again can keep your campaigns profitable and make sure that they're only targeting high quality search terms and high quality potential buyers. So once you have around 50 purchases, move from max clicks 
to max conversions and then again leave it for some time as it begins to gather data again and it begins to go through its learning period again and once you've done this you can move on to step two so step two is segmentation so after you have gathered enough data you've got sales data coming in you're pretty confident as to what's working and what's not we need to remove those products that aren't doing very well at all and so eventually what's going to happen is is your all products campaign is going to become your best seller campaign so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the product report and we're going to have a little look at which products are high spend no sales or high spend one sale with a really high cost per purchase and we're going to think about removing those products now i can't stress this enough do not do this too early don't do this if you don't have enough data because it could be that those products could take off and be top performing products for you and you've stripped them out of your main campaign too early you need to wait until you've got a concrete answer yes or no as to whether that product is going to perform long term for you so what i would suggest is do this monthly or every six weeks or eight weeks if you're sort of on that smaller side of the budget the lower end of the budget cap and what you should see is your campaign getting more efficient over time so by pruning out those products that aren't doing so well your winners can win the products that sell can do well and they can get more budget more distribution which will increase your sales and increase your ROAS off that campaign so you'll end up with what looks like a bestseller campaign it's full of your top performing really high quality products so whilst reviewing also look at your asset groups and the different categories of products that are doing particularly well right like if bracelets or backpacks are doing really well then it might be that we want to double down when it comes to developing new products right when we're introducing new products we're launching new products if these particular categories have done really well okay well how can we turn them into new products right like how can we produce new backpacks that might sell just as well how can we produce new products that can do just as well based off our historic data inside the google ads account right if there's a couple of products that do really well how can we double down on those how can we produce new versions of them in different sizes or different materials or different colors whatever it might be to ultimately see more consistency when it comes to developing new products and if you're in apparel you might find that certain sizes do really well you know your large might do well your small might do well for women you might find that the triple xl doesn't sell as well right so if you're buying a ton of that inventory you might want to think about inventory levels and so well you know we can knock on the head ordering as many extra larges because we're not selling as many of those products right we can double down on our order next time of large t-shirts rather than double xl t-shirts because we know they don't sell so well so step number three is what do we do with all of those products that didn't do so well and this is especially true if you've got stock to move we can't just turn off inventory and stop advertising it if we've got hundreds of products left in stock that we need to essentially go through through to generate the cash to buy more products so what i want you to do is duplicate the performance max campaign that we've already got set up and then i want you to just edit the listing groups edit the product in those campaigns and just drag and drop those products that didn't do so well the underperforming products into this new campaign and then rename it underperforming products pmax so allocate around 20 to 30 percent of your budget to this campaign so if you're spending roughly 33 pounds a day that could be between six and 10 pounds a day in budget towards this campaign now to be realistic there's normally two reasons why products don't perform so low demand people just don't want them or number two optimization work the listing just needs to be improved maybe it's your offer or maybe it's the ad copy or part of the listing needs to be improved to get more exposure and start performing well so start by reviewing the basics pricing number one are you competitive against your competition against your direct competitors run a quick google search double check where you are pricing wise on google shopping are you extremely expensive compared to your competitors that could be one problem are your titles structured correctly you know if you've got keyword rich titles or are your titles broadly talking about the product and it's not 100 percent clear what the product is from your title that could be a problem images could also be another issue are your images eye-catching enough are you running still product shots or have you got lifestyle images running you know can we test different images in your product feed to hopefully improve performance that could be another one and ad assets so look in your main campaign 
campaign, look at the different assets that worked. You know, you can look at the click through rate on specific headlines and descriptions, and you can look at the engagement rate on images and stuff, and you can pick apart, okay, well, this image worked better than this one, and this headline worked better than this one. So why did it work better? And then you can instill more of that inside your new asset groups, inside your new campaign. And if they still don't sell, then the goal just needs to be getting rid of this inventory as quickly as we possibly can to free up the cash to buy new inventory. So to do this, I'd start adding some promotions into your ads to start selling through that inventory. You can do this inside Google Merchant Center. You can set up promotions for 10% off or there's tons of different promotions that you can set up, but they will show on your ads. Your ad will show a, a sale sign on your shopping ads, which really helps click through rate. That might help to start selling through some of those products that aren't doing so well. And as difficult as this is to hear, if products have still not sold after 90 days, then they're more than likely never are going to sell right so it's probably best to just cut your losses if you've tried everything cut your losses and stop advertising those products and then just work through the inventory you know you can maybe have a pop-up to sell through some of the clearance stock or there's different ways that you can get rid of it offline but you don't want to keep spending money on products that aren't selling just don't let your losers drain your advertising budget so over time this will give you a healthy and data-driven account so you'll be constantly improving efficiency and fueling better performance out of your ads, giving more capital to what's working and taking away ad budget from what's not. And then also using the existing data from the campaigns to start thinking about other products that you could be launching to get better performance out of your campaigns. So as I mentioned, your main campaign will just naturally evolve over time into your best sellers campaign. And once you start seeing healthy sales and a strong ROAS and you're happy with the performance of those campaigns, you can start thinking about layering in new campaigns or increasing your budget or adding new custom labels for different segments so you can begin segmenting your products in more efficient, sort of more mature account ways. And that will help to improve performance for you long term. But this is a very very, very, very strong base. You know, having that efficient one campaign fueled by the underperforming campaign and then using all of that to help with R&D and deciding what new products to launch is really a good sort of flywheel to improve performance for your business when you've got a small Google Ads account and a small budget. So that's how I would run Google Ads with a small budget focusing on performance max in 2025. Keep it simple, focus on the products that do well and let the data guide you. If you found this video helpful, helpful please consider giving us a like and a subscribe we're a very new channel we're trying to work our way to 200 subscribers so any help on the way would be muchly appreciated and if you're currently spending 4,000 a month on google ads right now and you're looking to improve performance it could be revenue it could be roas we offer completely free google ads audit seven to ten page long for google ad accounts spending over 4k a month so if that's you and you want to get better performance out of your ads then go ahead and hit that first link in the description and if not i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching